thank you, Jesus. This is another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. O oh, gracious Father, we come approaching your throne of grace for your son, Jesus. Come right the way to come up. First of all, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness, your mercy. Thank you for your goodness and your stretched out hand to deliver and let the captives go free, Lord. Lord, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding this afternoon concerning your word, Lord. Help us, God, that we want to get to your word. Help us, Lord, that we won't take anything away from your word. And we'll write and divide your word by your spirit and by your great power, Lord. Lord, we pray for the president and those in the thought of the Lord, the Democrat, the Republican, Lord. Let there be peace in the White House, Lord. Let there be peace in our house, O oh God. Those that are not saved in that White House, let it be saved. Those that are not saved in that house, O oh God, Lord, that you'll save them, Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord. Those that have coronavirus, Lord, you say with your stripes we heal, with your blood we're cleansed, sanctified by your word, we set apart, Lord. We believe the word that came out of our mouth, Lord. That your word is true. In Jesus' name, O oh Lord. High blood pressure, sugar diabetes, heart problem, back problem, leg problem, kidney problem. Lord, all part of this member of this body, Lord. You paid it all. Over 2,000 years ago, Lord. You say it's finished. In Jesus' name, we pray for that backslider, that sinner man, that woman, that child, Lord. No place to go, God. Give them a mind. They may not want to be saved, Lord. Give them a mind and want to stay saved, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen and Amen and Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Get a little bit more volume. Amen. Bless God. Thank God for the microphone. I got a built-in mic. Sometimes they tell me I don't need a microphone. Amen. Praise God. We want to continue with a subject that we started on. Uh, that's paid, they're going to be paid five ninety. The subject is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We know that yesterday was thanksgiving. One thing about God, we all need to be thankful every day, seven days a week. When thanksgiving come through on once a year, then we need to be thankful on that day. After this past, we still need to be thankful. We're going to go to the Word of God and find out what God's Word says about Thanksgiving. That's what we want to learn as Christians, as believers. Amen. Bless God. As those that come into the body of Christ need to know, amen, what God's Word says about Thanksgiving. Come with me to Nehemiah 11, chapter, the 17 verse. 11, chapter, the 17 verse. And Medion, the son of Mechah, the son of Zabdad, the son of Asab, was the principal to begin the thanksgiving and prayer. So we see here these men were set in the church, in the congregation. They were one of the leaders to thank God in prayer. So you can thank God in prayer. We're going to see the different a uh, way that you thank God. Amen. Bless God. So here, these men was a sign. Lord, have mercy, God. And bless myself, God. Get me slow down, Lord. Already, it seems like I'm getting drunk already. Oh, it don't take nothing for me to get drunk. I stay full. I looked up this lesson more than one time. Now, i it again to see. So we see that the principle uh, prior was the principle thing of thanksgiving here. And Bagnard, the second among his brethren, and the 
Yadra, the son of Shimon, the son of Gideon, the son of Gideon. So all these men were set up to start off proud with Thanksgiving. My God, my God, my God. Coming into another one, we'll see chapter 12, 46. And you're going to see on this, Thanksgiving was singing. Thank you, Lord. You know that song? Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. When they had, Lord have mercy, they had a, they had a choir. Uh, they were singing thanks to the Lord. My God, my God, my God. For the same Brian, for the days of David, and that's I, a whole that was chief of the singers, and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. So they were praising God, and they were thanking God. That was their job, as singers. My God, get a lot of hand clapping, man, for who he is. He's an awesome God. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy, amen, to be thankful, amen, to tell him, amen, that you, you thank him for what he's doing. Amen, I thank him for salvation. I thank him for healing and prosperity. I thank him, man, for saving my soul, amen, over 44 years ago. Thank you, Lord. He's a keeper if you want to be kept. My God, thank you for my healing, Lord. Lord, have mercy, God. Thank you for my salvation, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I got my right mind today, Lord. Lord, have mercy, God. Thank you for peace. Thank you for joy and love. Thank you for mercy and grace. Thank you for goodness. That's what's said here, Lord. Better slow down here. Oh, I got that ball turned upside down. Come with me now to page. 1276, Ephesians 5 and 20, page 1276. Page 1276. Thank you for my family, Lord. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my grandchildren. Son in law. Thank you for getting Jesus and Bible's understanding. All the members, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give you the highest praise. Ephesians 5 and 20. Page 12, 76. Giving thanks always for all things of God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank God in that name, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. For all things. How many things? Y'all want me to look at the word all? It mean all. Everything. I should thank God for that. We're going to see that some people didn't thank God for what God did, and they lost out. Oh, we're going to get there. Okay, we'll get there sometime today. Come with me now to page 673, Psalm 69 and 30. Page 673. Page 673, Psalm 69 and 30. I will praise the name of God with a song. And will magnify him with thanksgiving. Magnify means appear larger. <laughs> I'm magnified. So I look at the word magnify. I'm gonna make God larger in my thanksgiving. Because of all he's done for me. There's nowhere on this green earth that I can thank God right now for everything he's done. Because there's some things he's done for me. That I know nothing about. But I thank him for. Unseen time. 
thank you, Lord. Let's just think I didn't even see. I thank you, Lord, that you stopped that from happening before I got my second turn. You struck that wreck. You struck that sickness. You struck it in this trash, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for it. So I'm going to magnify him in my thanksgiving. Because he's a big God. Lord, have mercy, God. This all shall please the Lord better than ox and bullocks. That will please God more than a sacrifice. That's what Psalm said. God said, I'll find out if I thank God. It's better for me to offer bullocks or, or any, any animals to God. Amen. It's when I thank him. So I can magnify God in my thanksgiving. So that it please him that had horns and bull hooks. Then the second part, the hummer shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. Amen. Amen. Get a lot of hands out for the way I found it. Thank you, God. Good to see him. Page 673, and we're dealing with thanksgiving. And what the word of God says about thanksgiving. So the hummer will see and be glad when they see you thanking God. Lord have mercy God. That's something. Uh, because they humble. They humble, they man. They humble before God. Amen. A humble person is a person that obey the word. That's how you humble yourself before God. Give a lot of hand, God, a little David. Amen. Be in now. God, thank God as well. Page 673. Go on to the 31 part. This also shall please the Lord better than ox of the bullocks. That had horns and hoof. That is the second part. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. Amen. Who heart are you going to live? My heart. Uh, as if you seek after. Lord, have mercy. So you can seek God through praise. You seek God through worship, being thankful. You show up. Who's going to show up? God is show up. For the Lord here to pour, and his father is not his. Prisoners, let the heaven and earth praise him. The seas and everything that moveth therein. Then the fifth verse: The God will save Zion, will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell therein and have it in possession. Then the sixth verse: The seed also, also his servant shall inherit it, and they that love his name. Shall dwell therein. I love the name of Jesus. We got Jesus' name all over this place. Yes. You go in that office back there, you got his name on four walls. How many walls? Four. How many walls you got in, inside of a office four? Yeah, you got the four walls. So he on every he on every wall. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't right, when you go sit in that office with all them names around you, them devils will come out of you. Who's gonna come out? Because uh, I love that name. I love the name of Jesus. My God, there's power in that name. Deliverance in that name. Salvation in that name. Prosperity in that name. Healing in that name. Lord, have mercy, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that name, Lord. Hallelujah. I give you all praise and thanks for that name. That's a powerful name. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue goes confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord, giving the glory to God the Father. All the glory will go back to his Father, because he sent his Son. Thank you, gracious Father, in Jesus' name. Come with me now to page 1342. Page 1342. That'd be Revelation 7 and 1. Revelation 7 and 1. Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. They were doing what? Holding the four winds of the earth. Can y'all do that? No, sir. Can you hold the wind? No, sir. Can you hold the wind? Well, these angels can hold the wind. Yeah, I, ain't, I ain't going to Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your angels and camped around us. Holding the 
the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow. They can't even blow. Oh, that's awesome. God, this is awesome, God. Oh, I ain't going nowhere, Lord. I ain't backsliding. Nor on the sea, nor on any tree. I mean, the wind couldn't do nothing. Couldn't do no more blowing. Second time, I saw another angel that sitting from the east, having the seal of the living God. He cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Now, God gave these angels a command. To hurt, to hurt the earth and the sea. Can you see him? You can't see the angel? No, sir. Oh, but you'll see what they can do. Amen. You'll see the effects of it. Just like you can't see the wind. But you see what the wind do. You see the wind blowing the trees or blowing the leaves. Oh, and if it's cold enough, you'll feel it. Amen. Yeah, let it get 20 degrees. I guarantee you, you'll feel that wind. Oh, thank you, Lord. What a God. Thank you. Look at that third verse. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in our forehead. Mm -hmm. Say, don't do nothing yet until I got I gotta get uh, God's people sealed. Mm -hmm. I gotta get who? God. I gotta get the people of God sealed. I gotta get my I gotta get my children sealed. So don't do nothing right now. I'm giving you a command to do something to this world. But don't touch nothing. Until I seal them. Thank you, Lord, for the seal. Lord, have mercy, God. Fourth verse. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there was sealed 144,000 of, of all the tribe of children of Israel. And the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. I sealed 12,000 of the tribe of of the, the tribe of, of, of Gabe was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Ashai was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nathan was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manas was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Seven was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephi was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Israel was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebra was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. And the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. As of this, out of hell and low, a great multitude which no man can number. How many men can number? No man. Lord, have mercy, God. Had to be sealed. People and time stood before the throne, before the Lamb, covered with what? What color is it? White robe. Why is it white robe? Because they've been washed in the blood of Jesus. Been washed. That's it, sister girl. They've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. They have no sin, no spot on the robe. The robe has been made white through salvation of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm just going to say I'm here. That trouble sign, I'm out of here. And Psalm in their hand. Ten right. And cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb. So we see the Lamb, that's the Lamb of God, is Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. As another scripture said, the Lamb of God came to take away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. I was talking to the Lord this morning in my spiritual exercise. I said, Lord, I don't want no sin. You can have mine. Take them all away. Yes. You know, some folks want to keep some because it make them feel good. I made my mind out of on none of them. In the name of Jesus, and I thank you, Lord, for taking them all away. Yes, I want none of them. Jesus' name, so I can have me a white robe. No spot on it. Thank you, Lord. Let them pray. And all the angels stood around about the throne. And about the elders and the four beasts fell before the throne on our faces and worshiped God. Lord, have mercy, God. Saying, Amen. Blessing, glory, wisdom, and what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. 
They put thanksgiving in there. Why they praise him? Why they blessing him? Lord, have mercy, God. Thank you, Lord. And honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I thank God. Amen. He's forever. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What is this which are aired in white robe? Which came they? Where they come from? Oh, they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you where they came from. Now say unto him, Sir, thou knowest. It said to me, Be that they came out of a great tribulation, and have washed their robe, made them white in the what? The blood of the Lamb. As Sister Kim said earlier, they got washed in the blood of the Lamb. Because they got washed in the blood of the Lamb, they had to tell them how they got cleaned up. Thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for the Lamb of God to clean me up and then keep me clean in the name of Jesus. 14 verse. 15 verse. Therefore I did before the throne of God serve him what? Day and night in his temple. And he sat on the throne should dwell among them. God is holy. He cannot stand sin. So sin has to be paid for. Christ did it. He paid for our sin. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For suffering and dying. Amen. So we can go free. I was a prisoner to sin. Sin had me locked up. I was up all night. Pouring, drinking, cutting up. Acting crazy. The day is Friday. Some folks got a few dollars. And instead of them taking that money, put it to the side somewhere. They gonna go have a good time tonight. Not me, Lord. I'm free. And whom the Son set free is free indeed. Sixteen verse. They shall hunger no more. Neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun ride on them, nor the heat. They ain't uh, you didn't get this one. Tribulation and tough time. That's the scripture said. The Lord brought us through that. Through them tough times. He said, it ain't going to be on them no more. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Lord, have mercy on God. He's going to give us some food. He ain't got to go to Crovis or stand in the line nowhere. Jesus is going to feed us. To lead them unto the living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away how many tears? Oh, you crying now because you've gone through something. The Lord said, I'm going to wipe away all them tears. Ain't going to be no more crying. Ain't going to be no more dying. Ain't nobody going to be dying no more. That's going to be the end of that. Lord, have mercy. He said, the last thing he's going to destroy is death. That is an enemy. Satan brought that in through disobedience. Lord, have mercy. He started off, amen, in the garden with Adam and Eve. Now he's trying to come at us. We got the same opportunity Adam and Eve had. We can receive his lies or reject him. Thank you, Lord, I can reject him. In the name of Jesus. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The Lamb is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, shall lead them into the living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There ain't gonna be no more crying. Thank you, Lord. I thank you in advance, Lord. I believe your word. That you're gonna do it. Exactly the way you said it. Come on to page 1262. 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 10th verse. Now he had managed to see to the soil both melts of bread for your food. Multiply your seed sown and increase, increase the fruit of your righteousness. So if I'm doing right, he increased them fruit. 
If I'm sowing a seed, and then that's my money I'm talking about now. If I'm, if I'm sowing a seed, he going to multiply. Lord, how do I say it? He'll give me bread, man, for food. Amen. Because I'm up. Lord, how do I say it? He gives seed to the soul. Those that sow them back to God. Amen. What God gave to them. Let him find it. Being enriched in everything to all bountifully, which calls us through, calls through us thanksgiving to God. So I thank God for, for giving the seed that I put out there back to me. So now, when I get blessed by God, I say to Herman, thank you, Lord, for this seed, because you done gave me some more seed to sow. So I put it back in the ground. You take a farmer, amen, and he plant a seed, amen, in that ground, he's looking for a harvest. But if you ain't put no seed in there, don't look for nothing. How can a farmer grow anything without a seed? So you got to put the seed back in the ground once you make his harvest. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for knowledge and understanding. And what I'm supposed to be doing. I ain't got to go ask nobody. I got the word to tell me what I got to do with it. I ain't going out there and give it to the devil and have fun with him. Pay my tithes to the devil. What I'm going to have when I get through paying my tithes to the devil? Yeah. Let me get back over here all that with that note. Oh, but the word says you'll be cursed with a curse. Huh? The word says you'll be cursed with a curse. Pay the what? Curse with a curse. Hmm. He said his whole nation robbed him. What's happening to this whole nation today? Are they getting blessed? Don't take no rocks and sign for me to figure out. I don't want, I don't want to run with him, Lord. I don't want what? I don't want to run with him. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord. Amen for your word. 13 5. Why about the experiment of their ministry? They glorify God when you profess the subject unto the gospel of Christ, for delivering and distributing unto them, to all men. 14 5. By their prayer for you, which long after you for exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. How <laughs> thank you, Lord, for your unspeakable gift. Amen. His name is Jesus. Lord, help us say God. Thank you for our Savior. Go with me now to page 1314, Hebrews 1315. Page 1314. That's Hebrews, the 13th chapter, the 15th verse. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. How long? Continually. That end is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Lord, have mercy, God. He didn't tell me what I need to do. I need to praise him, and I need to thank him. Say, so come before his presence with thanksgiving and with praise. And bless his name. Lord, that must be God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, how do I come for his presence of being thankful and praising him? Because he got more he's going to be doing. Oh, uh, he ain't finished yet. He ain't finished blessing his people and taking them out of situations that other people falling in. Because they don't know no, they don't know God. They don't know how to be thankful. They don't know how to praise him. Because they don't, they lose out on their blessings. Come with me now to Luke at page 1134. Page 1134. That's going to be Luke 17 and 11. 17 chapter. The eleven verse. 
You're going to see here, only one came back and thanked him. Because he did, he got more. The other nine, they went their way, and they only received what the Lord gave them because they came, didn't come back and thank them. They weren't made whole. Lord, I'm looking here. Remember some years back, I was asking God for another truck. He said, you ain't thankful for the one you got. So I started thanking God for the truck, and I ended up with a new one. That's when I learned how to be thankful to God when he do things for me. Lord, have us thank you, Lord. And it came to pass, he went, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. As Luke 17 and 11, we go to the 12 verse. As he entered into a certain bench, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood before all. Now, in the Old Testament, when a person had a leprosy, you couldn't come near them. But here is Jesus coming near these lepers so he can clean them up. Jesus Christ, I don't care how dirty you are. He'll come near you to clean you up so you want to stay dirty with sin. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, now have mercy on us. Fourteen verse. When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself to the priest. And it came to pass that they went, they were clean. Obedience. They had to obey the voice of Jesus to get their cleansing. Say, so go show yourself to the priest. That's what they had to do in the Old Testament. Whenever they had a leprosy, they had to go before the priest. The priest had to check them out to see if the leprosy is still there. Because they had to say unclean when they came around people. That's what they had to do. They had to, had to keep saying that they were unclean. So the priest had to check them out to see if they've been clean. Oh, Jesus Christ is somebody. Thank you, Lord. When he saw them, he said to them, see where we're at here. Oh, okay. Where did I get that from, Lord? Okay, let's go back to this Luke. Oh, we got some more groceries here that jumped on me. 17 and 11. Okay. And, and uh, 13 verse. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, have, a master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourself. And then the priest said, Ask him, him for mercy. I left that 13 verse out. I'll have to go back and get to that. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. 15 verse. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his, at his feet, saying, giving, th giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. He wasn't a Jew. This is a Samaritan. But he knew how to thank God, Lord, that much for what God did for him. He fell at the foot of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and told him, thank you. Now what's the reward that comes from coming back and thanking the Lord for what he's done for you? And he glorified God. 16 verse, fell down at it. And 17 verse, and Jesus answered, said, Where are thou not ten clean? But where are the nine? Where are the, where are the nine there? A clean ten. Wait a minute. They gone about their business, happy they healed. Huh? I said, They gone about their business, happy they healed. Oh, they gone about their business because they got their healing. I wonder how many people like that. When they get something from God, they go about their business, you don't see them no more. When God has done something for them. In the church. That happened in the church today. People come. 
They get a blessing from God. Once they get their blessing, they gone. How long do you think that's going to last? Ain't going to last long. You ain't too sharp out there. If you're going to just come, get a prayer, and don't come back. Until you need something again, get a prayer. And don't, I, I ain't playing that game. Not me. Because I'm always need something from God. 24-7. Jesus and Adam said, where are not ten clean, but where are the nine? They're not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger, is a miracle. Jesus called, called him a stranger, because he's not a Jew. And he said unto him, Arise and go thy way, thy faith had made thee what? Oh. So he ended up with more. Yes, Lord. Where the other nine wasn't made whole, they were just playing with their levels. They needed something else from Jesus. You know, some people leave before the service is over with. And they don't get the benediction. But the benediction could be your blessing. Now you done left before you can get your blessing. Is that happening today? Oh yeah, that's happening today. People take off and don't realize they have left some of their blessings behind. I understand if you have to go to work, that's different. But if you ain't got to go to work and you're leaving early, make it back and make all that in the Put it on. When it was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God come not without observation, neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. Behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. It's on the inside of you. He called somebody. He put his kingdom on the inside of us. I tell you, get ready to come and establish his kingdom. So his kingdom are on the inside of those that believe, those that have been saved, those that repent, turn from their wicked ways, and came to serve a true and living God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for you. God's an awesome God. Thank God for that word. Y'all find out, I got to be thankful. Hey Amen. We're going to see here, this man wasn't thankful. Let's see what happened to him. At page 556. Page 556. That's going to be 2 Chronicles 32 and 24. 32 and 24. In those days, Hezekiah was sick to death and prayed to the Lord and he spoke to him and he gave him a sign. Look at the 25th verse. But Hezekiah running not again according to the benefits done to him. He wasn't thankful for what God did for him. What was going to happen to him? For his heart was lifted up, therefore was right upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. See the danger of not being thankful when God do something for you. You take it for granted. God ain't pleased with that. He was Hezekiah, he healed him. Instead of Hezekiah thanking God, he got lifted up in pride. That God's supposed to do that for him. Lord have mercy, Jesus. It's awesome stuff here. I don't choose it. See, I don't give you just the smooth side of it. I give it all to you to make sure that we come before his presence with thanksgiving and with praise. And don't forget to thank him for your food and then before you eat it. Thank you for the clothes he then gave you. Thank you for my clothes, Lord. Thank you for my transportation. Thank you for being Jesus and Bible myself for this building, Lord. For the van, Lord. Well, in that bless God, in that two trucks in the car, Lord. I don't bless the horses here. All them houses paid for, Lord. Thank you for the rent houses. All of them paid for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. And I bless the horses here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm a thank you. I know what He's done for me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I bless the horses here, Lord. Twenty-six five. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself 
for the pride of his heart. He did what? He humbled himself. It's good that he turned that around. That he had to humble himself. Because God, God was getting ready to put something on him in Judah. And, Lord, that was the rest of the people that were running with him. Because he wouldn't thank him. He humbled himself. The pride of his heart, both here in, the, in his habitation in Jerusalem, so that the wrath of God came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. Lord, have mercy, God. So it's good for me to know that before I get myself in trouble with God, to be thankful. Is it just once a year? Every day. E every day? Every day, every day. Every day God does something for you. It ain't just once a year. Every morning you wake up. Oh, Lord. My God, get a lot of hand for you here. God's an awesome God. Thank God for the word. Come with me now to page 963. Page 963. That's going to be Daniel, the second chapter, the 23rd verse. Second chapter. The 23rd verse, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my father, who has given thee wisdom and might. So what are you thanking God for? Knowledge. Oh, wisdom and might. And how he gave them strength. Oh, this message is going to bless me. I don't know what it's going to do for you, but it's going to make me be more thankful. Thank you for that, Lord. I need this for Herman. Andrew Young, that's me. I thank thee and pray thee, O thou God of my Father, who hath given me wisdom and might, and made me known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. So the king was living with somebody to give an interpretation of his dream. Or he's going to kill all the wise men. So Daniel was included in this. But God, what he did for Daniel, gave him the wisdom and knowledge of the dream. Now he's thanking God for it. You doing what? He's thanking God for it. 24. Therefore Daniel went into Erot, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He's going to get rid of them all because ain't nobody can give him interpretation. He went and said unto, unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. I'll show it to him, because God showed it to me. One thing about God, if you ask God for something, and you need to have some knowledge of it, wisdom, he'll show it to you. Oh, yeah, he'll show you. He'll take the cup off that person, and he'll let you see what that person doing? God is somebody. Yes, he is. 25th verse. Then Aaron brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. I found a man. I got a man that can tell you, king, uh, what y'all was all about. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Dar Shadrach, or thou able to make known unto me the dream which you have seen, the interpretation thereof. Dad answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise man, the astrology, the magician, the sort the soothsayer, show unto me the king. You got all you got all them forms working for you, they can't show me. See, it's all working for the devil. Soothsayer, astrologist, magician, all of them was working for the devil. Well, the devil can't give a dream. He can't give an interpretation of the devil. And God can do that. The devil is limited in what he can do. Why do you want to follow somebody that can't give it all to you? And be thankful 
that God can. Lord, have mercy, God. Thank you, Lord. I didn't get it all from you, Lord, when nobody else can't get it. He's here couldn't give the king nothing. All, his, all of the folks uh, that he had around him. Put that in front of him. There was a God in heaven. There was a who? God in heaven. There was a God in heaven that revealed secrets. Make known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what shall be in the latter day. Thy dream and thy vision of, of thy head upon thy bed are this. I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you, because God gave it to me. As the deal came, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, which should come to pass hereafter. And he that revealed secrets made it known to thee, which shall come to pass. That the letter scripture said, God gave it secret. To the servants. Let's see if I can, let me see if we, if we can go there. He gave it a secret to who? Yes, Is that Deuteronomy? Let's go to He reveals his secret to his servants. Help me with it, Lord. I ain't gonna spend a lot of time looking for it. It's in Deuteronomy, either the thirtieth chapter. So you can't find that for me. That God revealed His secret to His servant. I'm gonna continue going forward. I'm gonna spend a lot of time looking for it. Amen. Bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless God. Let's go back and now we'll sit the camp looking for that. Amen. We're going to continue. Amen. In this. Amen. Let it try. But as for me, the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. And because of me, not gain. But for thy sake, they shall make known interpretation to the king, that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Amos 3 and 7. Huh? Amos 3 and 7. A-M-O-S. He revealed the secret to his servant. You it's, found it? It's in Amos. It's A-M-O-S 3 and 7. Okay. What, what, uh, what, what page that's on? And what chapter? Okay. That's good. Okay. Well, Sister Kim, looking for that, we're going to continue. We're going to continue. That one word, thou king saw us, and behold a great image. This great image who brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form that I was troubled. The image head was of a fine gold, his brass and his arm of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest tell that there a stone was cut out without hand, which smote the image upon his feet. That there of iron and clay, and break them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floor, and the wind carried them away, that no place were found with him, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation of hell before the king. He told the king what his dream is, what he had. Now you're going to interpret it So you can have a dream, but you need God to interpret the dream, because they ain't all in the dream. You got it, Sister Kim? Page 995. Page 995. Three and seven. All right, let's go to page 995. And what's the uh, verse of the chapter? Um, okay, that's seven, three and, three and seven? Yes, sir. Third chapter, seven verse. Children of the Lord will do nothing, 
when he revealed his secret to the servant, the prophets. To the servants who? To the prophets. And to the servants, the prophets. That's who he revealed his secret to. Ain't that so? Now God revealed his secret to Daniel. Lord, I'm just myself here. Because Daniel prayed. You think God will give a secret to you if you ask him? Yeah. He would? Yeah. Why? Because I'm his servant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's good, Sister Kim. Yeah. Amen. You're his servant. Amen. So you really, you really did it to you. So here he did a secret to Daniel. We're going to go back to Daniel. See, it was at the third chapter. Or it was in the second chapter. We're in the second chapter. And uh, we go on the 37th verse. Thou, O king, art the king of kings, for the, for the God of heaven has given me a kingdom, power, and strength and glory. Who gave it to Nebuchadnezzar? God did. Why did God give this kingdom to him? Now, he ain't even a, he's not, he, he, he's, he's serving our God. So why did God turn around and give him the kingdom? God do what he want to do. Huh? God do what he want to do. Yeah, because his children have disobeyed him. So God's children have disobeyed him. So now they're in captivity with Nebuchadnezzar. So he put the women on his children and gave the kingdom to another man. Like so the kids said, God do what he wanted to do. So when God do something like that, is it right or wrong? <laughs> we the ones that are wrong. Uh, amen. That's good, Sister Kim. Amen. God is always right. We the one that's wrong. So whatever he do is right. So he put a women on him and, and then gave the key to Nebuchadnezzar. Then he had to put a women on Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, we ain't going to go into that. He straightened Nebuchadnezzar out. Because he wouldn't do what Daniel told him to do. Look at that fat bird. And what sound of the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven, and he given it in thy hand, that made thee ruler over them all. Thou art the head of, of the gold. You the head of the gold that God, you know what God did it. And after this shall ride another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong of iron. For it must as iron break it in pieces to do all things. And of iron that break it all this shall it break in pieces and bruise. Wherever thou sawest the feet and told part of pottery clay and part of iron. He gave an interpretation of the dream. The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with merry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay. Amen. So the kingdom shall be partially strong and partially broken. Wherein thou sawest iron mixed with merry clay. They shall uh, mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Lord, have mercy, God. And for the fourth word. In the day of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Do you see that star there? Amen. What does that mean? A As a prophecy. Amen. So who are you going to set up? Jesus. As Jesus. Lord, I must say God. Hey, amen. He let Nebuchadnezzar know. Amen. He's going to set up his son. Amen. Oh, yeah. It's coming to pass. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And he's going to set his kingdom on his earth. And then, amen. Bless God. And Jesus Christ, they're going to give the kingdom back to his father. And his father's going to reign. So he, he, his kingdom is set up, amen, for everlasting and everlasting. Which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Now be left to her? To other people. Right now you got other people getting, you know, they had to vote for another brother there. Yeah, so they, they, they would go by four years and then they vote again. 
And he heated that person would come out and another person would come in. Well, he said, ain't going to be nothing there. Ain't going to be left to another. That's going to be in all that voting. Y'all can vote all you want. But when Jesus come back, Amen. it's going to be in all that voting. Yes, Lord. Shall bring in peace and consume all the kingdom, and it shall stand forever. This kingdom ain't going nowhere. But as much as thou saw it, that the stone was cut out of the model without hand, and it bring in peace of the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and gold, the great God had made known to the king, which should come to pass here. That's awesome. But he couldn't interpret it. And the dream is certain. The interpretation now is sure. You can go ahead and mark that down, king. It's going to happen just like I'm interpreting to tell you. Then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, fell upon his face, worshiped Daniel. He did what? Was he supposed to worship Daniel? No. No, he don't know nothing. See, he served, he served all of God. He don't know nothing. And commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet orders unto him. See, the king know that Daniel came with the right dream of what he had. Then turned around and interpreted it for him. The king said, oh, yeah, you own it. Then the king answered to Daniel and said the truth. It is that your God is the God of gods. You know all of them are gods. Mm -hmm. And a, a Lord of kings. You know all of them kings. In a revelation of secrets, see now couldn't reveal this secret. You can't reveal this secret unless you had a God to do it. Then the king made Daniel a great man, gave him many great gifts, made him rule over the whole province of Babylon, and the chief of governors over all the wise men in Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and said, said Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the fires of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat at the gate of the king. They got the other, the other three brothers and brothers. It was living for God. Amen. I wonder where he can go pick some other folks. No, he needs somebody that serves the true living God. <laughs> Not any God. Hey, man, the wise man ain't going to pick people that's wise. The serving God ain't going to pick folks that, that doing anything, everything they want to do against God. He ain't going to pick that kind of people. Give him all the hands clap for you. Uh, thank you, Lord. This man for the three. Amen. Thank you. Amen. was thanking God. Amen. For the dream. Come with me to Romans 1 and 21. We're going to have to stop here because our time catching up with it. Romans page 12 23. Got more gross than we got time. My God, my God, my God. So if you're having a dream, pray. God will give you the interpretation of it. Don't you try to figure it out. That's what the king is trying to do. He ain't, his wise men couldn't figure out nothing. Fooling with the devil. Romans 1 and 21. Because that when they you knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither was what? Thankful. They weren't thankful. That's what we did with. Being thankful. They weren't thankful of God's creation, who God is. In fact, when they went and shot your own thing. You're going to see the danger when you're not thankful for what God, amen, the knowledge that God can give you. You're not thankful for that knowledge. But you're going to establish your own way. Because that when they were new God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain. And the imagination of that foolish heart was darkened. So whenever you're not thankful for God's knowledge of who God is, He'll just give you over to a reprobated mind. You'll see that in the word. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Change the glory of the uncorrupted God into an image made like to a corrupted man. They, 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 they made ours to burn four footed beasts and creeping things. Put it forth burn. Well, for God also gave them over. Up to uncleanness to the lust of their own heart. Okay, you say that's what you want? I'll let you have it. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. 
That's men with men and women and women because they don't want to retain the knowledge of God in their life. Because they don't want to obtain it, he give them over, amen, to a filthy heart. I don't want none of that. Help me, Jesus. Put that mind who changed the truth of God into a lie. You got some preachers today. They change God's word, and it's supposed to be the truth, but they turn it to a lie. Let me tell you one thing about the word of God. If you stay in the word of God long enough, and I've been in the research on it. Amen. It's all study today. Amen. I've been retired now for 13 years. Amen. Amen. I've been retired and I've been saved for 44 years. I've learned more in 13 years than I've learned in 31 years. If you add them two together, you'll end up with 44 years. The reason I learned more in 13 years than I did in 31 years, I had more time to study. can't just bring me anything. Give a lot of hand clap for you. Look at the glory. You, God does. Thank you very much, Lord. Thank you for more wisdom, more understanding, more knowledge, Lord. Of your word, oh God. And bless all of us out here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And bless us here. So, again, you know where we stopped there? Okay, we'll go to 25. Thank you. I'm getting a little drunk of here. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, worship and serve the creature, more than the creator, who is blessed forevermore. Amen. They worship God creation instead of God. You got that God on today. Amen. Man is leading people. Amen. In the wrong direction. Without a God. And they make them believe that God, amen, is an honor. God is a judge God. He said, put no other God before me. Put the same vine. For this God God gave them up unto a vile affection, even as women did change the natural use in which it was against nature. Now he got the women with women. He got a one woman, she thinks she's a man, the other woman thinks she's a woman. And they're both women. You believe that kind of stuff, what you need to do is go to an island. Put them on an island and let them multiply. Put two women together that think one of them is a man, and the other one is a woman. And let them multiply. Come back in another hundred years or two hundred years and see if they're still there. The devil is a lie to them. They got a reprobate mind because of turn the truth of God word into a lie. And it wasn't thankful. Like I saw, so the man leaving the natural use of the woman burning that lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving himself that reconciled the error which was met. For they burned. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobated mind, this base mind, Lord have mercy. I live in a red of amen, and in a corrupt, worthless. Yeah. Being filled with unrighteousness, fortification, wickedness, covetous, malicious, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malicious, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boastful, inventors of all of evil things. Disobedient to plans, without understanding, coming to break us, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who know the judgment of God, that they commit such things, or were to who? Yeah. You got, this, you got too many people that like smooth stuff. We can give you all, we can give you both sides of it over here. Then you can make it in your, uh, your mind who you want to be thankful for. That God, amen, will give you the knowledge of his word. And when he gives you the knowledge of his word, the way he is, not the way man say he is, but by the way his word say he is. And then be faithful when he gives you that knowledge and wisdom and understanding of who he is. So you won't end up with a reprobated mind. Who know the judgment of God, 
If they don't do such thing and worthy of death, not only, get, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So if you run the door that likes to do that kind of stuff, you're going to end up just like them. Uh-oh. We ain't out of work. We are out of time again. Amen. Be thankful. Amen. What God has given in the truth of his word. Amen. Don't have a reprobate.